now it's time good morning everyone and our respected resource person dr rohan mishram sir myself zakaria ahmed uh, phil assistant biotech hub hmm? uh, phil assistant biotech hub bahana college i am your moderator for today it's my pleasure to welcome you all to the uh, online uh, DVD funded hands on training program on bioinformatics organized by uh, Institutional Biotech Hub Bahana College Zorhat. Now I like to request uh, our uh, lab assistant Miss Malika Borua to introduce our uh, resource person. Thank you. My course. Good morning to one and all present here. We are honored to have the esteemed presence of Dr. Rohan Mishram, the principal today, Pune University. He is an today, Pune University. He is an expert in the field of computer data, drug discovery, medicinal chemistry, and bioinformatics. He has numerous research publications in reputed national publications. national publications. I encourage English both heartedly and absorb the immeasurable faster than Dr. Mishram sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Malika Barua. Now I request our research person to start the session. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much for your kind introduction. Uh, <coughs> so shall we, uh, sh shall I share my screen so that yes, sir. Uh, we can begin? Okay. Is is my screen visible yes, now? It is visible. Okay, so <laughs> this is always a suspense. You really don't know what will happen. I mean, we are using this Zoom and Google Meet for quite a long time from uh, COVID. But every time I join meeting, it is all. I always keep my fingers crossed. Here, yar, kuch garbar nahi hone chahiye is baar. Okay. So, uh, is my screen visible now? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Visible. Okay. For instruction, ah. visualization, and analysis. Yes, sir. So, uh, uh, let uh, uh, since now you know that I work as an assistant professor at my informatics center, University of Pune. Uh, 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 let me kind of tell you that. Uh, let us be really very informal and uh, let us not have any kind of formality or even inhibition on asking uh, questions right so let us uh, try to uh, keep uh, this talk and uh, let us try to be as interactive as possible uh, so the thing is that i uh, quite really know uh, you know it is a very difficult for online <coughs> audience to uh, you know, uh, keep it engaged for a while. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, you people are uh, very welcome to ask question, right? And uh, you can uh, uh, type in uh, that chat box if there are any, you can interrupt me at any time. I will ask uh, you a lot of question. I will ask you to do some activity so that we can uh, uh, keep ourselves awake <laughs> at uh, this 10.30 in the morning. Okay, so I hope uh, this mode will be okay with everyone. Yes. Will, will it be okay? 
will it be fine everyone anyone can on their fine yes you can you can uh, write in your chat box right i don't see anything written in chat box yes how many of us are here i see there are 23 of us okay so let us let us please be really really uh, you know interactive and uh, we ha we have kind of gathered here to learn something right and as i have been told that uh, uh, i would expect audience uh, a mixed kind of audience uh, right from the student stage till there would be uh, some people who who are quite uh, you know refined and uh, at the teaching level as well so how many of uh, you are students at least you can write your name in the chat box i am just trying to get to know my own audience now are there any students in the chat box uh, in the meeting is the students maybe yes uh, so arido subrat right puri puri smita right so uh, you you guys are phd students right nikita dekha you are also phd student okay and i hope the remaining uh, phd uh, yes uh, you are phd scholar from department of zoology tamil nadu right so uh, it is nice to meet you okay uh, so uh, one more thing that i want to uh, share with you is that uh, uh, let us uh, not uh, stick to any kind of format or any kind of uh, uh, you know language barrier nahi rehna chahiye so i hope everyone uh, is comfortable with hindi and english of course most of the time we would uh, uh, talk in uh, english and uh, uh, just to keep it quite informal so that i will just make sure that everyone is comfortable asking question so you can ask me question in english or uh, hindi mein bhi chal jayega koi dikkat nahi but just make sure that you learn something isi ke liye apan yahan par aa jaye right so uh, this is it uh, well let us let us kind of begin our talk now okay so today i am going to talk about a very 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 basic of protein structure visualization and analysis right so uh, to begin with uh, when i was uh, you know when i kind of uh, begin my uh, career in structural biology and molecular modeling then or even in biochemistry uh, well most of you might have seen this picture in your biochemistry textbook right so can can you can you guys tell me what is this picture ki picture kya hai you can unmute yourself and tell if you know or uh, you can uh, just uh, <coughs> type in the chat box right hey. what what was that uh, picture that you have seen do, do you remember this picture this picture well uh, uh, don't really doesn't really matter this picture is a very famous uh, picture called as photo 51 right so it is uh, you know x-ray diffraction pattern uh, that was captured by rosalind franklin uh, back in early 1950s and it is said that this was the picture based on which uh, later on watson and crick proposed the model Uh, for double helical uh, dna as such okay so now my question is that i always used to wonder uh, ki like uh, and in the very next page or somewhere nearby in the same textbook you would end up with this beautiful uh, double helical uh, structural model of dna right 
so uh, when i used to always wondered as to uh, what uh, how is that uh, we end up generating or end up uh, visualizing this three dimensional model when we start out with something like this right so so this photo 51 or any diffraction pattern clearly don't look like look anything like this three dimensional model that is usually shown okay so and then just like captain jack sparrow i used to wonder ki there is something missing as to how is that we end up on this three dimensional model when we have starting point something like this some diffraction pattern right uh, how many of you have uh, had this question in 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 while you were studying right <laughs> कितने लोगों को ये ये सवाल आया था कि भाई वो डिफ्रेक्शन पैटर्न फोटो 51 जैसे दिखता है एंड हाउ इज दैट वी एंड अप विद दिस थ्री डायमेंशनल मॉडल ठीक है सो क्लियरली देयर इज समथिंग मिसिंग देयर इज अ ब्रिज देयर इज अ गैप दैट इज नीडेड टू बी फिल्ड राइट वी नीड टू ब्रिज दिस गैप एज टू हाउ डू वी एंड अप हियर इफ वी स्टार्ट आउट विद से सम डिफ्रेक्शन पैटर्न okay so uh, well uh, let us try to uh, bridge out this gap first i won't go into much of the crystallography because quite really frankly i am uh, not a crystallographer i am a bioinformatician so uh, i will i will not go in more details on that quite frankly i don't know much about it for uh, start uh, starting out with right so whatever i know i will uh, try to share with you right and this is what we are going to do okay so we the first task that we are going to do is to uh, get an idea as to uh, from where and how structural data is generated right and uh, then uh, how that uh, data is deposited in pdb and what is exactly that you end up downloading from uh, protein data bank okay so this is what we are going to uh, uh, to discuss first kya kya discuss karenge we would first discuss as to how the structural data is generated that you end up downloading from pdb second thing is that uh, how do you judge the uh, quality of any uh, protein structure that you end up downloading from pdb uh, what are the things that you should consider when you uh, kind of download any Uh, pdb uh, structure as such okay and uh, uh, then we would uh, discuss ki like uh, what is pdb flat file format in which we will discuss uh, things like how exactly is the uh, structural data organized in a pdb file and uh, how is that that structural data is interpreted by various software that you usually uh, visualize your proteins in right so uh, how many softwares uh, have you already used for protein visualization any any idea as you have you for visualizing your protein have you have you done structure visualization in your maybe msc or you might be using it in your uh, uh, you know phd work are you are you using any software structure visualization pdb ye sari cheeze you mene video banwa ke ki hai aap log one mobile le lo kisi no okay koi dikkat nahi uh, i will kind of uh, tell you how do we do that thing right so that is why we are here okay so this is what we are going to do we are going to see ki bhai how this uh, structural data is arranged in uh, pdb uh, pdb file okay we would try to uh, you know break down the anatomy of uh, this pdb flat file and try to understand as to how the structural data is interpreted by the software says okay so this is all what is going to happen in our uh, morning session and in our afternoon session uh, we would uh, begin with our hands on wherein uh, we would uh, start out uh, with like very elementary visualization of protein 
like uh, how is that secondary structures are visualized what information you can gain from visualization of secondary structure we would try to discuss how polar and non polar amino acid residues are distributed in your protein what is their impact right we would also try to see ki bhai how is that you can have an idea about uh, the isoelectric point of any given protein if uh, you have been provided with structure can you answer this question <coughs> yes it can be done if you kind of have a visualization software with you then we would try to deal with like what are hydrogen bonds and what are different type of hydrogen bonds we would try to align the structures right like uh, i i have been told by dr sangeeta yesterday that uh, you have already covered up with uh, sequence alignment in your previous session maybe is it so yes sir kal ke session mein sequence alignment hua na aap logo ka i hope uh, you are already uh, kind of now well versed with uh, phylogeny that is what i have been told right so uh, you you might have an idea as to how do we align the sequences but protein structures can also be aligned and we will deal with that aspect as well at the end of our uh, session right and we would talk about rmsd truth mean square deviation and what what might be the application of such rmsd right uh you would also talk about uh, this buried and exposed uh, residues and uh, what is their impact on protein structure and if time permits we would uh, uh, talk about active site visualizations as well okay so uh okay so now let us begin discussing as to how is that protein uh, structural data is generated right and usually uh, the very popular method for generating protein structural data is uh, protein crystallography or uh, people also call it as x-ray crystallography wherein what you do is that uh, first uh, you begin uh, with uh, processes like uh, you would want to first isolate your protein then you would purify your protein right and then the uh, most important task would be to find out crystallization conditions right so this is you know a very very important and you can say time limiting step tls right so this takes a lot of time so let us uh, let me tell you as to why finding out the crystallization condition is a difficult task so the very first difficult task is to isolate the protein in its uh, in its uh, native state and then uh, to purify it and then uh, to figure out ki what might be an appropriate condition in which your protein might crystallize so what exactly when i uh, what exactly happens so when i say that you are trying to crystallize a protein so well say for example if this is your protein then when 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 i say that i have crystallized the protein that would mean that i will have an array of the same protein that is you know placed one upon another in all dimensions right so uh, this is first asymmetric unit second asymmetric unit and in each and every asymmetric unit you will have a protein so when i say that i have a crystal structure or i have a crystal of my protein that would eventually mean that uh, the proteins are arranged in a kind of uh, very definitive array and we say that the protein has been crystallized one more thing that i want to clarify in this figure is that uh, uh, you know uh, don't get an idea that this protein crystals are going to be uh, this big and they would be present in uh, this jar okay so basically these protein crystals are very microscopic uh, in nature you would require some microscopic technique even to visualize uh, or to see these uh, crystals and to mount these crystals on the x-ray crystallography machine right so well now say for example if say 
uh, you have now isolated the protein purified the protein you have figured out the proper crystallization condition and now you have the crystal of your protein by hand okay so next thing that you might want to do now is to take these crystals to uh, any uh, well say for example any research institute where there is x ray crystallography setup available uh, so if you are say in pune then you might want to visit national chemical laboratory or national center for cell sciences where uh, where there are uh, crystallographic setups available then you would handle uh, your uh, crystals uh, to the technician and what the technician will do is that he will mount those crystal on the crystallography machine and expose your crystal with x rays and as a result uh these x rays uh, uh, since uh, since there would be atoms that are present in your proteins and these atoms would have different electron densities and when x rays are exposed to uh, the electron densities of course they would uh, diffract from uh, the original part and uh, uh, once they get diffracted uh, you would uh, be able to collect uh, the diffracted patterns right so uh, this is how uh, you would end up detecting uh, multiple spots on the detector available right so uh, by the end of this uh, step you would end up something like this so uh, you would end up like uh, there would be multiple spots with different intensities right and uh, mm-hmm. this is where the crystallographer will raise his hand and say ki bhai mera kaam ho gaya hai uh, i have done my job and he would hand you over a list of a list of these spots theek hai spots ka list rahega aur unka kya rahega intensities rahega okay so this is what a crystallographer will give you he will give you ki okay this much spot i have observed in your uh, on my detector and each and every spot has got certain intensity and there would be some values for intensity right so now each and every spot you can define the position of each and every spot using something called as index triple and you would you would discuss or you can describe it in h L. So HKL stand for index triple value that that you can use to uh, you know identify uh, which spot you are dealing with, right? So uh, with this data by hand with this index triple value, now what you do is that you feed this data. Okay, so what this crystallographer will give you basically it would be a spreadsheet. and this spreadsheet just like excel sheet that would list out how many uh, spots you have observed and how many and what is the intensity of each and every spot okay so uh, then you might take that data to your lab and you might feed that data to softwares like winkut if you are using windows winkut or ccp4 okay so these are the softwares wherein you feed this uh, spots data and intensity data and this software will apply a mathematical transformation called as the fourier transform right so this is the expression of of uh, the fourier transform that would be implemented or that would be applied to your intensities and spots that you have obtained and you don't have to basically do anything you would have to uh, you know uh, export or import the fourier transform on your uh, input data so the idea of uh, uh, the, the idea of uh, using this fourier transform is to generate something called as electron density okay so this fourier transform will calculate something called as rho of x y z so this rho correspond this uh, figure correspond to something called as the electron density is kya kehte hain apan we call it as electron 
density. The idea is to calculate the electron density of the atoms that are that were present on uh, that were present in your protein. Okay, and to do that, uh, you would need intensities and uh, the spots of those intensities as such. Okay, so this uh, rho x y z correspond to something called as the electron density of atom having the coordinate x y z for a spot having the index triple value h k l. So this is what it means. Okay, so now to calculate the electron density, uh, you would first require to have this term f of h k l. This f of h k l is called as the structure factor. So, you have to calculate the intensity of the structure factor. Calculate karna padenga. Okay, and this V correspond uh, to your uh, volume of the crystal uh, cell acid. Okay, and this triple uh, sign, this triple summation sign, uh, uh, well, why is that we do this triple summation? Uh, because we want. Uh, well, you know, uh, this triple summation, which now is done for each position of x, y, z, uh, this h, k, l. Okay. So, of this expression, this i indicate that it is a complex number. Okay. So, the idea is that uh, starting out with intensities and list of spot, you feed this data to softwares like Wincoot and CCP4, you end up with electron densities. Right. And uh, this electron density uh, would be represented in form of something called as electron density maps, what we call as EDMs. Okay, so this electron density map would look something like this. Okay, is this looking at this stage? Okay, and this electron density map. Once you have this electron density map. Once you have this electron density map, just a minute. I lecture Okay. Uh, so once you have this electron density map by hand, then uh, you would go on fitting the residues that are uh, that might fit in such electron density map. Okay. And you might end up something like this you would what you would do is that you would generate a model that would fit into your electron density map that is what is going to happen in softwares like Wincoot and CCP4 right so the thing that you download from PDB is this okay this is what this is this is the model that you generate <clears throat> the model that you generate by fitting it into the electron density map right so now your electron density map can have various resolution your electron density map can have resolution of 2 m strong it can have 3 m strong it can have 1.2 m strong so on and so forth okay so uh, the thing is that we would talk about resolution in a while. So, uh, the resolution would eventually depend on how well your uh, proteins were crystallized. Okay. So, well, well, let us not go into the mathematics jargon over here. Uh, but just remember that you might need a very finely resolved uh, structures so that you can uh, identify the atoms in your electron density map quite vividly at higher resolution okay so we would talk about resolution and how is that uh, you are supposed to infer the value of resolution uh, when it comes to downloading the model we will talk about that in a while okay so the thing is that what you do is that once you have this electron density map you would generate a model and try to fit that model into this electron density map and this refinement process might go on Right. So, this, is, this will be an iterative process. You have electron density map, generate uh, the model, try to fit that model into electron density map and again see if it fits well or not. If it don't fit well, 
again try to refine your fitting of your model into the electron density map and then go on doing this until and unless you are kind of satisfied ki okay whatever model that i have generated now it uh, fits quite well to my electron density map and for doing that if we calculate something called as the r value okay we will talk about this r value after a while but uh, if you 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 keep on refining your model till you reach the r value of 0.20 or 0.26 as such okay so ye r value kya batayenge aapko this r value will kind of tell you how well your model fits into the electron density map right and once you are now really very sure ki okay uh, uh, this is uh, this is the final model this is the best i can do then you upload your model into databases like pvb and then it would be available for public to download and use it okay so uh, what i want to say is or uh, the take home message of the story is that uh whatever you download from pdb is a model so the better word to say whenever you download the structure of any protein you must say ki like i have downloaded the model of say certain structure okay so what you end up downloading is a model and this model is based on certain reality and this reality my friends is nothing but the electron density map right so whenever you download anything from pdb remember that it is the model that you are downloading and that model is based on certain reality which in our case is electron density map okay so now is the time my friend <laughs> that uh, you might want to ask questions if there are any okay yahan tak samajh mein aa gaya hai kya aap logo ko ki kya ho raha hai are you guys still with me or have i lost you somewhere yes Okay, please be interactive. Let me also know that uh, uh, if if uh, I have done uh, or if I if I have to tell you something more. नहीं समझ में आया बात करते हैं अपन, right? Please let me know. Okay, how many of you want to see this uh, uh, electron density map? Right? Do you want to see? देखना है क्या आप लोगों को कि भाई ये जो मैंने इलेक्ट्रॉन डेंसिटी मैप बताया है हाउ इज दैट एग्जैक्टली लुक्स इन सॉफ्टवेयर हाउ इज दैट यू माइट फिट योर मॉडल इन टू इलेक्ट्रॉन डेंसिटी मैप यस अगर आप not going to kill anyone <laughs> right uh, chat box is open for query you can unmute yourself there are, are 42 participants that, that have joined don't be shy right so this is going to be a uh, really very interactive okay let me show you as to how is that electron density map might look like okay so what you are seeing now are you still seeing my uh, screen yes sir screen dikh raha hai mera yes sir <coughs> so i hope uh, this spdbb software is available now uh, is uh, is visible to you right yes sir so uh, what you are seeing now is the uh, one of the refinement stage of uh, building up the model right So, जो यहाँ पर आपको ब्राउन कलर में दिख रहा है, 
दैट मे बी ये कौन सा अमाइनो एसिड ऐसे ड्यू रह सकता है बाय बाय विजुअलाइजिंग दिस थिंग ओके सो द थिंग इज ये जो ब्राउन कलर का दिख रहा है आपको दिस इज इलेक्ट्रॉन डेंसिटी में है एंड दिस इज आल्सो थ्री डायमेंशनल ओके now you can see that uh, we have uh, tried to fit this uh, uh, this can be yahan par ek nitrogen hai yahan par ek uh, oxygen hai so which are the amino acid residues that have uh, this uh, uh, such a kind of functional group nh nh2 and oh it can be of course as part uh, aspartame or glutamine right so what i want to focus over here is <clears> that <throat> this aspartame or glutamine is fitted into such electron density maps okay now you can see that the, you you can rotate you can move this electron density map and uh, uh, if you are kind of not satisfied ki okay isme kuch gadbad hai this is not aspartate aspartame nahi hai ye ho sakta hai ki ha par you know glutamine ho then you would try to replace this side chain and then try to fit it again right so this is how your electron density map might look like when you go go on fitting so what you would do is that you would first focus on a single amino acid residue then move on to next amino acid residue try to build up a model that would fit into this electron density and one by one you would then end up uh, uh, fitting all the sequence uh, into your electron density map right जैसे कि यहाँ पर दिख रहा है आपको दिस इज द इलेक्ट्रॉन डेंसिटी मैप ऑफ से सम ऑफ अदर अमाइनो एसिड एसिड्यू दिख रहा है यहाँ पर दिस सीम्स टू बी से सम एलिफेटिक ग्रुप प्रेजेंट हो रही है राइट एंड यू आर काइंड ऑफ विजुअलाइजिंग दिस इलेक्ट्रॉन डेंसिटी मैप एट से सर्टन पॉइंट इन राइट okay so uh, i hope now you get a clear a visible idea as to how the models that you end up downloading from pdb they are generated that is what i wanted to say in a nutshell right everyone comfortable with this thing okay so uh Are you guys interested in uh, doing all these things on your own? Maybe uh, we can do this if time permits later on. Okay, okay. So uh, now since we have covered, ki like uh, how is that you generate this model, right? And uh, what exactly happens in the background before you uh, you kind of download uh, those structural model from. मॉडल दैट आई एम ट्राइंग टू वर्क विद वेल How is that? I am going to decide कि भाई कौन सा मॉडल अच्छा है कौन सा मॉडल बुरा है राइट right? बुरा तो कोई मॉडल रहता नहीं है बट वॉट इज द मॉडल दैट आई वॉन्ट टू डाउनलोड फ्रॉम पी डी आई वुड जस्ट गिव यू एन एग्जाम्पल ओके सो वेल से फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई एम इंटरेस्टेड इन लेट एस गो टू पी डी बी वेबसाइट ओके सो दिस पी डी बी इज कॉल्ड एज प्रोटीन डेटा बैंक and this protein data bank host most of the crystallographic and structural information of biological micromolecules like your protein nucleic acids your protein in complex with say some inhibitor right uh, well now well say for example if i am interested in finding out uh, uh, well say for example dhfr dihydrofolate reductase right and if i search for the query like dhfr how many molecules do i end up i end up with like with say like 596 dhfr right so like let me refine my query like i want dhfr 
from home uh, you can see mycobacterium right you might be interested in that or have i typed the wrong thing ph from myco So you get a lot of hits, right? This is the crystal structure of dihydrofoliate reductase from Mycobacterium tuberculosis, right? So you get a lot of hits. And now, how is that you would uh, decide ki ye jo multiple hits aaye hai, isme se which one is the hit or which one is the protein that I'm interested in, right? So the thing is, for doing that, you might want to have a look at something called as resolution. Right. So over here, against each and every model that is offered to you, there would be something called as the resolution information, and this resolution will always be in say some abstracts. Right. So you can say now that this particular model with identifier 4KL9, this model of DHFR has been crystallized at the resolution of 1.39 abstract. Right. This model has been crystallize at the resolution of 1.23 angstrom this model has been uh, crystallized at the resolution of 2 angstrom so on and so forth okay so if you click on this link you would be carried out to uh, the page where, from where you can download the uh, download your uh, model that you might want to use okay so what information is provided here they give first something called as resolution based on which you can uh, uh, you can kind of uh, uh, tell ki, okay this is the model that i am working for and the another thing that uh, we have already discussed is something called as the r value okay so uh, there is r observed value of 0 0.15 okay and resolution of 1.39 okay so uh, what exactly this resolution mean right so uh, let let us talk about this resolution first uh, so this is where you know uh, this is where things uh, would become interesting okay so the model that you end up downloading from pdb it can be generated on the electron density map which has got a resolution of 3 m strong this has got resolution of 2 m strong this has got resolution of 1.2 m strong right so uh, the model you download will look as good as it is for 3 m strong unit resolution or it is being developed on 1.2 m strong unit resolution the model will be the same but the thing is that it is you to decide which one to follow right so this is the unique uh, you know description of reality that the researcher has observed in his electron density map and based on this particular reality he has generated the model that is deposited right so eventually the highest resolution would be the one with having the lowest value for resolution right let's we'll say for example at a resolution of 1.2 am strong most of the atom in your amino acid residues are quite uh, well defined in space right so there would be very less ambiguity in placing the model in this electron density map while on the other hand consider over here the electron density map at 3 m strong unit resolution well uh, over here you can see that uh, there is a simply blob of electron density and you can you know orient your uh, structural model into various ways okay like uh, well say for example uh, you can uh, right usko aise bhi orient kar sakte hai aise bhi orient kar sakte hai aise bhi orient kar sakte there, there, there can be multiple ways in which you can orient uh, your amino acid residue when you have got electron density at uh, you know lower resolution 
lower resolution any care higher the value like 3 m strong is you know not very well resolved structure while 1.2 m strong uh, is very well resolved electron density right so when it comes to this 1.2 m strong unit resolution there remain very less ambiguity of placement of uh, the atoms in your amino acid uh, of your proteins right but when it comes to 3 m strong uh, 3 m strong unit resolution or even lower uh, uh, resolution then it might mean that there there might be ambiguities while placing this atoms right so fitting me problem ja sakta hai ko yahan par fitting me problem nahi jayega right so what i want to tell you is that you should always prefer the model that has lower value of this resolution right lower the value is ka matlab kya ki you can imagine ki bhai electron density density map kuch is tarike se hoga hai yahan par in which uh, where there are very less uh, chances of placing uh, less chances of ambiguous placing of atoms in your protein model that is what i want to say okay then you have got something called as r value r value kya batata hai ki bhai how well your uh, your model fits into the electron density map so that is that is what it means okay so r value kitna rehna chahiye kisi bhi protein model ka it it should be say some uh, below 0.20 और 0.26 तो इसका कितना है 0.15 क्वाइट वेल बिलो राइट सो यू कैन से दैट दिस इज अ हाई रिजोल्यूशन स्ट्रक्चर प्रॉपर्ली फिटेड इन इट्स इलेक्ट्रॉन डेंसिटी एंड दिस इज द मॉडल दैट आई वांट टू डाउनलोड ओके आर 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 देयर एनी क्वेरीज डू समवन वांट टू डिस्कस okay so now let us talk uh, move ahead okay and uh, let us uh, try to see as to how this structural data is uh, you know arranged in any pdb file okay so now let us try to use or uh, the model that we are going to use uh, is having a pdb identifier called as 1 hew right so 1 hew is an accession number so every structure that is deposited in pdb will they will have say certain uh, accession number and you can download this structure if you know that accession number okay now how is that i i can download uh, any molecule so uh, let us see ki bhai ye 1 hew wala molecule kaun sa hai jiske sath mein apan aage phir sara kaam karne wale hai hey right. so this 1 hew correspond to lysozyme lysozyme in is an enzyme okay and it was uh, it was you know uh, it was crystallized from the white portion of hen egg right and this lysozyme is said to be uh, is said to be crystallized with its inhibitor uh, trinac okay so this is the model that we are going to uh, deal with it in more detail and this model as you can see is uh, is resolved at 1.75 m strong unit resolution that is good right and uh, uh, when of course uh, then how is that you can download it yahan par aapko download option dikhta hua download files and there are multiple uh, you can say uh, multiple uh, options uh, uh, this this pdb provides a lot of ways in which your structural data can be downloaded and you might be interested in downloading the pdb molecule or any structural model in pdb format right so this is the uh, this is the link that you might want to follow just click on this link right or apply when it's w molecule download ho jayega theek hai so uh, you don't have to do that now i just wanted to kind of show you as to how do you download the protein structures from pdb uh, you might want to use the model that i have already sent you on uh, the whatsapp if you are uh, trying to uh, you know trying to do these things simultaneously as we go on 
राइट तो मैंने आपको चैट बॉक्स में ये दिया हुआ है राइट so uh, you can use all these files okay uh, i would advise you that you download this one hew molecule that i have given you right good so uh so first let us try to see ki bhai ye kya hai right what is that we have downloaded okay this is the bonding session okay one more thing that i think i have missed telling you is that uh, we are going to use this software called as swiss pdb weaver which uh, this ka link maine aapko de diya hai i will tell you how is that uh, how you download it you need to go and search for uh, spdbv and then maybe follow this spdbv download uh, button or the very first link that might end up might be the one okay swiss pdb we were download okay you would be carried on to the uh, website from where you can download this go to this download section right uh, of course agree on the terms and license and uh, this is the one that you might want to download click over here microsoft windows and it will start download right open it okay maybe unzip it you might want to unzip it and uh, once you unzip it over here right and uh, this is the file you can open so this is the spdbv software that uh, you might want to use in the entire course of uh, today's discussion session okay so uh, is my screen still visible because i have seen something went wrong this screen is visible yes so now i have i have kind of told you as to how do you download the molecule and then now you know how do you download the software as well right so how many of you have tried to download it maybe we can not do it simultaneously as as we go ahead kitne logon ne kiya hai nahi kiya okay koi dikkat nahi aap kar lenge so first uh, let me uh, just tell you 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 people might have done this thing how many of you have used this spdbv software ya fir koi bhi visualizer sir jaise pymol ya rasmol maybe anything kitne logo ne use kiya hai have you used it before in your research in your teaching anywhere okay okay this might be the first time then uh, okay so uh you can open your spdbv like this right and uh, we have already downloaded your uh, one hew molecule right this th this one hew correspond to what this one hew correspond to the uh, protein molecule called as lysozyme which was uh, crystallized or which was isolated from the uh, white portion of hen egg as such okay so what you have to do is to simply drag and drop so that you can visualize it in any visualizer right so this spdbv stand for swiss pdb viewer right people also call it as deep view and what you can see now is that once you drag and drop uh, you can see this beautiful uh, three dimensional model of this uh, uh, lysozyme molecule right so uh, this is uh, what an initial look of your model might look like right so uh, can anyone tell me ki bhai ye kya dikh raha hai yahan par jo ghum raha hai yahan par three dimension mein 
वट इज दैट यू कैन सी ओवर हियर कोई बताएगा मुझे वॉट माइट बी दिस थिंग जो 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 मैंने आपको जस्ट बताया अभी क्या था वो इट इज इट इज ऑफकोर्स एन यू नो क्रिस्टल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ लाइजोसाइन ओके सॉल्व विथ एक्स रे क्रिस्टोलोग्राफी सो लेट मी टेल यू कि भाई केमिकली ये चीज क्या है राइट सो वॉट एवर वाइट थिंग्स दैट यू सी दोज आर कार्बन वॉट एवर ब्लू थिंग्स दैट यू सी दोज आर नाइट्रोजन ठीक है वॉट एवर रेड थिंग्स दैट यू सी दोज आर यूर ऑक्सीजन और समवेयर ओवर हियर यू कैन सी दैट देर आर सम येलो थिंग्स ओवर हियर एज वेल वेल दीज आर सल्फाइड रेल और यू कैन से डायसल्फाइड बॉन्ड दिख रहे हैं यहाँ पर दिस इज डायसल्फाइड बॉन्ड दिस इज डायसल्फाइड बॉन्ड right so most of your protein molecule would be made up of this components right it would be made up of uh, a lot of carbon molecules that are shown over here in uh, white rep- white color and then uh, there would be there would be nitrogens that are shown over here in blue color oxygens that are shown over here in red color right sulfurs are shown in uh, yellow color so this is something called as the cpk representation राइट इसी क्या कहते हैं अपन वी कॉल इट एज सीपी के रिप्रेजेंटेशन ओके सो नाउ आई हैव यू नो जस्ट हाउ इज दैट आई हैव डन कैसे किया था मैंने ये लेट मी अगेन फाइल एंड क्लोज इट राइट आई हैव यूज दिस आई हैव सिंपली पिक टिट अप फ्रॉम ओवर हियर एंड download or in uh, load it in your molecule this is called as drop uh, drop and drag and drop technique for loading the molecule right so uh, well uh, this is your molecule okay now let us try to understand first ki bhai how is that uh, this this visualizer interpret what data is present so that it can show you this beautiful three dimensional model what kind of data is present in this 1h ew molecule that is interpreted by our software so that you can see this right so iske liye you can open the same molecule into any visualizer for time being i am opening uh, this with uh, a visualizer like expert okay so uh, what at core is that you are kind of looking at the same file i have once loaded the file into visualizer it looks like this and if i load the same file into any text editor it might look something like this okay what i have done is that i have loaded the same file right the morning session ka jo one hw molecule tha वो मैंने पहले इसमें लोड किया एंड सेम फाइल आई हैव ओपन इट इन टेक्स्ट एडिटर जो कुछ इस तरीके से ठीक है सो द थिंग इज दैट दिस डेटा इज सम हाउ रेड बाय योर स्विस पी डी बी वीवर एंड इट जनरेट्स योर थ्री डायमेंशनल रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ योर मॉलिक्यूल ओके सो शल वी मूव अहेड आगे बढ़े समझ में आ रहा है भाई लोग इज इट इज इट ओके ओके प्लीज 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 लेट मी नो इफ इफ देर आर एनी डिफिकल्टीज राइट ओके फाइन सो फर्स्ट लेट अस ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड एज टू हाउ द डेटा इज यू नो अरेज इन योर पीडीबी फाइव right so uh, as you can see that this pdb file is a very big file okay so if you can uh, uh, see that how many lines are there in your pdb file that you have just uh, loaded so over here this is the first line second line third line fourth line fifth line okay and how many lines are there in your pdb file there are some 1627 line and just in a blink of a second when you drag and drop this file into your 
software the data of 1627 line was read and interpreted and it was shown in the three dimension as such over here okay so you know the computers have become quite really fast nowadays so that it 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 becomes really really easy for you to do this thing okay so uh, the next thing that uh, you might note is that every line in your uh, pdb text file it begins with say some keyword so you have got a header keyword you have got a title keyword then you have got compound keyword then you have got source keyword then you have got uh, keyword keyword then you have got experimental data keyword okay so this keyword will give you an idea as to what annotation it has to offer right so this header line the keyword that begin with header we call it as the header line okay so what do this header line offer you this header line will tell you that what is the name of the protein okay at what date it was deposited and what is the uh, four letter pdb identifier of that molecule okay then the next uh, line starts with a title called uh, uh, starts with the keyword called as title so title kya hai this is the title that is present in your pdb website refinement of an enzyme complex with inhibitor at partial occupancy right something 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 i maybe i will show you Uh, refinement of an enzyme complex with inhibitor bound at partial occupancy here make weight lies okay so this is the same thing that you might end up over here right and then you have got compounds compound uh, uh, lines a few of compound lines that will tell you as to if there are multiple chains then how many chains are there right then there would be experimental data that will tell you whether what kind of experimental technique was used for uh, generating this model right so over here the data is derived from x ray diffraction okay how many authors were involved then you have got revision date it will give you <coughs> or it will give you a track of Uh, the dates on which uh, this entry was revised as you can see that uh, uh, when it was you know deposited it was 20 january 1992 then the first revision happened on 31st january 94 then it was again revised on uh, 1st of april 2003 then in 2009 it was revised twice then in 2011 it was revised once again and the latest revision happened in 2007 okay and over here uh, it is also shown ki bhai uh, in april uh, 2003 they added the journal details when this model was published okay and uh, the thing is that each and every model that is deposited in pdb it is usually published in say some journal okay so uh, i would uh, usually recommend people that uh, you should read the literature associated with that model so the model that you are visualizing now that was down that was you know published in this journal right journal of molecular biology back in 1992 right so if you have any question ki bhai isme se ye kya hai wo kya hai meri samajh mein nahi aa then uh, you might want to go and download this paper read this paper and in this paper they would tell you ki bhai uh, why is that they have created this model what kind of different amino acid residues are there how many inhibitors are there if there are any and all those details as such okay so now you know as to where you can get helping information as such okay good uh, so now let us try to dive deep into what is that this offer okay so mote mote taur par aap bol sakte hai ki bhai this pdb file contains how many line it contains say some 1627 lines it it spans for this much of lines of data right and your uh, you can say that your pdb file can be uh, broadly Uh, divided into two portions, right? अपन क्या करते हैं? We can say that your PDB file can be divided into two portions, right? Let me let me draw this. Okay. So if this is a very long PDB file, ऐसा ऐसा ही PDB file है. 
then you can divide it into two portion okay so the initial part of your pdp file it is called as annotations okay and once the annotation is finished then you have got a very hard of your pdp file something called as coordinates section ओके तो मैंने अब तक जो कुछ भी बता रहा था दैट वाज ऑल अबाउट योर एनोटेशन सेक्शन सो यू नो यू कैन सी कि भाई ओनली वन फोर्थ पोर्शन ऑफ योर पीडीबी माइट हैव एनोटेशन बट थ्री फोर्थ पार्ट ऑफ योर पीडीबी फाइल माइट कंटेन द कोऑर्डिनेट्स एंड दिस इज यू नो द वेरी कोर एंड हार्ट ऑफ योर पीडीबी फाइल दैट इज दैट दिस सॉफ्टवेयर नीड्स टू विजुअलाइज राइट तो एनोटेशन में क्या क्या रह सकता है एनोटेशन में and in the documentation section you would find a file wherein they have discussed in quite lot more comprehensive way ki bhai how many keywords might be there in your pdb file and what is exactly uh, that they mean okay so don't kind of worry if uh, if if you end up finding out say certain keyword in your pdb file that you really don't you can find it out in the uh, anot or you can say in the documentation section in pdb okay now if i keep on scrolling down and down and down and down okay so uh, you might end up like at line 426 right so how many lines were there in your entire pdb file you can have an idea from over here right only one four portion i have scrolled down and yahan par iska annotation khatam ho gaya right uh, this is where the annotation portion of your pdb file gets and after this a bulk of pdb file contains lines that begins with atom right and this my friends is the very key portion of your pdb file okay this is this is the very heart that is you know <coughs> recognized by the software so it is interpreted by the software okay Now uh, let us go into more details. Okay, so ये करने से पहले well let us try to do something really very important. Okay, तो आपको यहाँ पर क्या दिख रहा है? So when one once I loaded uh, your PDB molecule, right? Let me. Uh, so what is that you see over here? This is something called as control panel. अगर आपको ये control panel दिख नहीं रहा है तो just go to this Windows and then select this control panel. It might show up over here. Okay. So uh, this control panel will tell you कि भाई how many amino acid residues are there in your protein, right? So this is at first position we have lysine. At second position we have valine. At third position we have phenylalanine. Fourth position we have lysine. At fifth position we have arginine, cysteine, so on and so forth. So how many amino acid residues are there now in your protein? There are some hundred and twenty nine amino acid residues in your protein if you scroll down. And as I have already told you that there are uh, 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 there is an inhibitor called as NAG that is present. So these last three residue correspond to your inhibitor. and how many amino acid residues are there now 129 of which the first amino acid residue that is present in your protein is lysine which is located at the first position yahan tak samajh mein aa gaya sab logo ko okay i hope it is fine theek hai so now let us try to go into more details of this thing ओके, सो इफ आई क्लिक ऑन दिस लाइसिन नाउ यू माइट हैव नोटेड कि ये लाल कलर का हो गया दैट मीन्स दिस लाइसिन हैज बीन सिलेक्टेड नाउ ओके सो नाउ इफ आई सिलेक्ट इट एंड इफ आई हिट एंटर नाउ यू कैन सी कि देर वेयर काइंड ऑफ 
सेंटर ऑफ ग्रेविटी ऑफ दिस प्रोटीन राइट सो इवन इफ आई लेट so now uh, this lysine you can see that it is now rotating around its own axis okay so how is that we know that this is lysine lysine ka structure aap logo ko malum hai kya right so this is the backbone right uh, this is uh, this is c alpha carbon atom this is carbonyl carbon atom to which this carbonyl oxygen is attached and uh, to this c alpha carbon atom we have got this amino group right and to uh, to this c alpha carbon atom maybe i will uh, i will change the label uh, representation so that you can uh, okay abhi kya hai yahan par we have kind of labeled it with amino acid residue we can also label what uh, what atoms are there in your pdb or in your lysine model as such okay to uske liye apan kya karenge we will go to this display then uh, Go to labels. Maybe select atom name. Right. So now you can see that you have got this C alpha carbon atom. Right. So this is uh, this is what is happening. <coughs> okay. क्या 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 रहता है lysine के structure में you have got C alpha carbon atom, then you have got CH two, then again you have got CH two, then again you have got CH two. We call it as C alpha carbon atom. This carbon atom is called as C beta carbon atom. The, the next carbon atom is called as alpha beta gamma. Then you have got delta, right? So this is what we are doing. Or कितने carbon atoms हैं इसमें? उसके बाद देर इज सी सी इप्सिलॉन कार्बन आइटम इप्सिलॉन कार्बन आइटम एंड टू दिस सी इप्सिलॉन यू हैव गॉट एन एच टू विच इज प्रेजेंट ऑन जीटा पोजिशन राइट सो दिस इज वॉट इज दैट यू आर विजुअलाइजिंग over here okay so this is ch2 present over this is another ch2 present at beta position this is another ch2 present at beta position another ch2 present at alpha beta gamma delta epsilon and then you have got nh2 at zeta nitrogen okay now one more thing that uh, you might want to add ki bhai यहाँ पर आई एम शोइंग लाइक दिस इज सी एच टू सी एच टू सी एच टू एंड वाई इज दैट इन माई मॉडल आई सी ओनली कार्बन वेर आर हाइड्रोजन बरबर है ना सवाल आ सकता है इज एंड इट इन दिस मॉडल यू ओनली सी हेवी आइटम्स राइट You have got C alpha, you have got C beta, C gamma carbon atom, C delta carbon atom, C epsilon carbon atom, and in that. then but in your uh, if you go by this way the valency of this uh, carbon atom or any other heavy atom will remain unsatisfied then where do that carbon at where do that hydrogen atom went barabar hai na koi batayega iska jawab in pdb file if the model is uh, uh, is given by uh, or if it is uh, 
uh, if it is produced by X-ray crystallography, you don't usually end up having hydrogen. I know I might be right. Yes, you can write in the chat chat box. You are free to, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, unmute yourself and talk. कि भाई ये जो एक्सरे क्रिस्टोलोग्राफी से अपन ने मॉडल डाउनलोड किया उसमें हाइड्रोजन कहां पर है उसमें क्यों नहीं दिख रहे अपने को हाइड्रोजन माय फ्रेंड्स द आंसर लाइज ओवर हियर ठीक है सो द थिंग इज कि योर हाइड्रोजन कंटेन्स ओनली इट कंटेन्स ओनली हाउ मेनी उसमें इलेक्ट्रॉन्स रह सकते हैं हाइड्रोजन में हाइड्रोजन में कितने इलेक्ट्रॉन्स होते हाउ मेनी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर देर इन हाइड्रोजन देर इज ओनली वन इलेक्ट्रॉन राइट एंड वॉट वी ट्राई टू डू इज दैट वी ट्राई टू collect the diffraction pattern that is uh, you know uh, 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 that 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 might be diffracted by uh, one electron the thing is ki iska electron density itna chhota hota hai aapke hydrogen ka right since since there is a single electron present in them the electron cloud is very small and therefore uh, the diffraction pattern is usually not detected Uh, on the detector screen when it comes to hydrogen, right? So, abhi iska electron density cloud hi chota hai, so eventually uska diffraction bahut kam honga and hence you won't find a spot for hydrogens, right? And if there are no spots, then electron density map will not generated, right? And if there is no electron density map, the atom will not be resolved in your model, and therefore, my friends. due to this thing your hydrogens are usually not resolved in the model so i hope it it get clear to you ki bhai why is that uh, you end up lacking hydrogen in the models that are solved using x ray crystallography iska jawab ye hai ki uska electron density bahut kam hota hai jiski wajah se it is not possible to detect the uh, diffraction pattern of this uh, hydrogen okay and since there is no diffraction pattern uh, there would be no electron density map and if there is no electron density map for hydrogen it will not be resolved in your binary structure okay so do you want to ask anything regarding this thing Yes, the discussion is open. You want to add something? You want to talk something? Or is it that I am unable to hear nobody? <laughs> Please let me know. On my end, if I am unable to hear. Please be interactive, guys. It is not like. Okay, no issues. Okay, so where were we? We were talking about this. Okay, so we have this C alpha carbon atom. We have got the C beta carbon atom, C gamma carbon atom, C delta, C epsilon atom, and so on. Okay, now let us try to map how this data is present in your PDB file. Okay, so this is the same file. Okay, so now what your software does is that it reads this much of data. Okay, so as you can see, कि भाई यहाँ पर क्या दिख रहा है आपको? Okay, हाँ, now things are really quite very clear. Okay, so what you are visualizing in three dimension is the data. 
that your software has read from this file and uh, it is it is on display from line number 427 till line number 435 actually this is the data that has that is currently on display on your uh, screen as such in your three dimensional product so let us try to understand ki ye kya hai how is that your molecule or how is that your software interpret this data so every uh, atom uh, every line that begins with this atom keyword okay uske baad mein kya dikh raha hai aapko there is a column wherein it says ki bhai uh, this is first atom in my pdb file this is second atom in my pdb file third atom fourth atom fifth atom 6 7 8 9 so on and so forth and this atom number are continuous right सो so, ये वाले कॉलम से आपको क्या पता चलेगा ये ये वाले कॉलम से आपको पता चलेगा कि आपके पीडीबी फाइल में कितने आइटम्स हैं, राइट सो इफ यू स्क्रोल डाउन हाउ मेनी आइटम्स आर देयर इन योर पीडीबी फाइल फॉर प्रोटीन देर आर थाउजेंड एंड वन आइटम्स फॉर द प्रोटीन यूल कम टू दिस एच ई लेटर ऑन तो वॉट एवर लाइन्स दैट बिगिन विथ एटम की they correspond to the atoms that are present for in your proteins as such okay to protein ke kitne atoms hai there are 1001 atoms okay and they are all uh, you know uh, they are all uh, numbered sequentially okay uske baad mein next column kaun sa hai next column hai ye batayega ki the very first atom is a nitrogen the very second atom is c alpha carbon atom as you can see this is the first atom this is the second atom this is the third atom c beta carbon okay iske baad mein the third atom is carbonyl carbon jo yahan par hai then you have got carbonyl oxygen jo yahan par hai then you have got c beta jo yahan par hai you have got c c gamma jo yahan par hai c delta atom jo yahan par hai and so on so forth you go to the zeta nitrogen that is present okay the next column that is present uh, well it is called as the name of amino acid residue so what is the first amino acid residue in our list this is lysine uske baad mein kaun sa hai you have got valine dikh raha hai yahan par this is valine third one is phenylalanine do you see here at third position you have got phenylalanine so this column will give you an idea as to how many amino acid residues are there okay so now you can say that uh, line number 427 till line um, uh, till line number 435 belong to lysine first okay so this is first amino acid residue right ye column kya batata hai aapko this column tells you ki like uh, yahan se lekar yahan tak the data is for first amino acid residue after line 436 till line number 442 there is data for second amino acid residue that is valine from line number 430 443 till line number 453 there is data for phenylalanine so on and so forth so there are columns okay so yahan par aapko this a correspond to uh, that uh, there is a chain okay so uh, this will give you an idea ki isme kitne sare chains hai yahan par this data is usually uh, reflected in this column in your control panel okay so the thing is that this a correspond ki bhai there are there is a chain name as a chain so now your protein can be multimeric right it can have multiple chain it can have alpha chain it can have beta chain right so if there are multiple chain then they would be named as chain a chain b chain c so on and so forth right this column will give you an idea as to how many uh, how many amino acid residue this 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 column correspond to the number of amino acid residue okay and then come this portion this my friend is really really very important we call it as the coordinates right so the thing is that uh, you can say that this is the x coordinate of this nitrogen this is the y coordinate of this nitrogen this is the z coordinate of this nitrogen so we are talking about this nitrogen right the backbone nitrogen is described 
in three coordinates something called as x coordinate y coordinate and z coordinate well now let me tell you ki bhai ye kaise kaam karta hai okay to yahan tak samajh mein aa gaya ki aap logo ko what do these three column correspond these three column correspond to what is the x coordinate of this nitrogen x coordinate is 3.3 we'll say for example what is the y coordinate of this nitrogen 9.9 What is the z coordinate of uh, this nitrogen? It is 10.4. That is what it is. Uh, that is what these three columns correspond. So now let me tell you कि भाई ये क्या होता है. What are exactly this x, y, and z coordinate? Okay. So usually, whatever protein that you visualize, that is usually you know represented in three-dimension Cartesian coordinates, wherein you have what. x axis you have got y axis and you have got z axis so actually this z axis comes out of plane uh, but we can not represent it in this two dimension over here but but for timing you can imagine ki this z uh, the z uh, line that i have drawn over here that comes out of the plane of your uh, laptop or computer or the mobile that you are using okay so now what happens is that uh, uh, this is this is happening if this is the point right and on this x axis uh, you can have you know like this is axis hai so yahan par you can have units 1 2 3 and so forth right y axis par bhi it would be 1 2 so for and z axis per b there would be units 1 2 and so on so forth okay so now what do this 3.3 plus 4 right so this n atom is present we'll say for example 3.3 units away on the x axis from the center of the origin right so you would what what you would do now you would look at on x axis where is 3 over here okay so you have located 3 then what is the y location on y axis it is located at 9.9 then you would uh, really go to your cartesian system And go and then count one, two, three till we'll say for example it is nine. Okay. Okay. This point. This point correspond to three on x-axis and nine on y-axis. And what is the z coordinate? The z coordinate on z-axis it is present at the distance of ten point four. Right. So one, two. Well, so for example, this is ten, right? So what you would do is that uh, you would place a point which is present on three point eight on x-axis, nine on y-axis, and ten on z-axis. Okay. And when you locate this point in three dimension, you would place a blue dot and call it as nitrogen. That is what is shown over here. तो ये जो ब्लू डॉट है नाइट्रोजन सा नाइट्रोजन का ये कैसे इंटरप्रेट uh, हो रहा है इट इज इंटरप्रिटेड फ्रॉम दिस डेटा दिस ब्लू डॉट करस्पॉन्ड टू व्हाट दिस ब्लू डॉट करस्पॉन्ड दैट इट इज प्रेजेंट फ्रॉम अ फ्रेम ऑफ रेफरेंस जीरो दिस नाइट्रोजन इज प्रेजेंट ऑन 3.3 यूनिट अवे ऑन एक्स एक्सिस 9.9 यूनिट अवे ऑन वाई एक्सिस एंड 10.4 यूनिट अवे ऑन जेड एक्सिस एंड व्हेन यू get to that point in three dimension you would place a blue dot and you would call it as this is nitrogen then you would move on to the next line this is c alpha carbon atom similarly it is located on 2.4 unit from x axis 2.5 uh, 10.3 unit on y axis and 9.3 unit on z axis then you would place a white dot 
over there in three dimension and call it as this is the C alpha carbon atom and then you would place a bond because you know that this nitrogen is attached to C alpha carbon atom and in this way your software will go on reading this X, Y and Z coordinate and go on placing the corresponding atom and go on connecting those and in this way you might end up with this three dimensional molecule as you can see over here. Okay. Is it okay? This is this is what I found to say. Right? So now you have to say that when you have this molecule loaded, so in a blink of a second, it has read all this coordinate information. What is the x, y, and z coordinator, uh, coordinate of each and every atom? place each and every atom in three dimension in the, this particular visualizer and add the line, uh, you can say uh, connecting line, which we call it as bond between these uh, two atoms as such. Okay, so in this way, go on adding the, uh, uh, the dots over there and correspondingly go on adding the bonds. And in this way, you would end up generating the entire three dimensional model of your molecule. Okay, so this is how you know the data is arranged in your PDB flat file format and this is how your software uh, kind of uh, interprets that data. Okay, so now you know okay, this is the x-axis, this is the x-coordinate, this is y-coordinate and this is z-coordinate, right? Iske alawa, you have got something called as this this particular uh, column, ek hai iske aage, we call it as occupancy. And this is the next column is called as B factor column. So let us not uh, let us talk about this. Uh, what is occupancy and what is B factor? Okay. So let us first talk about this B factor. Right? B factor. के बारे में पहले चर्चा करते हैं कि ये क्या होता है. B factor is also called as the temperature factor. Right? So temperature factor आपको क्या बताएगा? कि it will tell you as to uh, how stable or what is the vibration of that atom in your protein molecule. Okay. <clears throat> so this uh, vibration of atoms in your protein molecule is accounted by this B vector. Right. So let me uh, again show you the entire molecule first. Right. So this is your molecule. Okay, let us uh, take away the label. Okay, so now uh, the thing is that you can color the atoms by B vector. Okay, all you have to do is to go to this color and uh, there must be B vector over it. So, what do you is to B vector se color. Kiya. Right? So, now what you can see is that if we color our molecule by B vector, uh, the molecule would be colored in a Vibgeor form, right? Vibgeor as per the visible spectrum, right? The molecule having the lowest uh, value for B factor will be colored in the shade of blue and the molecule or, or the atom having the highest B factor will be colored in the shade of red. This is what you the molecule that are colored in uh, the shade of blue are having the lowest temperature factor or having the least B factor value and the molecule which uh, and the atoms sorry and the atoms which are colored in a shade of red are having higher B factor. So what is that now you would interpret from this thing. There are some there are some atoms that are colored in the shade of blue while there are some atoms that are colored in the shade of red. So what do uh, this signify? This signify a kind of thermal vibration that the atoms that your protein undergo, right? So, well, say for example, uh, the most of the most of the atoms that are present in the core of your protein, well, those are somehow shaded in the color of blue towards the uh, blue spectrum of your uh, uh, 
uh, of your visible spectrum bluer shade right so what is that you can interpret isse kya interpret ho sakta hai ki agar aapne dekha hoga ki jo atom aapke protein ke core mein hai well those are shaded in the bluer spectrum while those which are present on the surface those are usually shaded towards the higher end of your spectrum wo red ki taraf rahega to iska kya matlab isse kya interpret kar sakte hain aap aapke protein ke bare mein isse aap ye interpret kar sakte hain you can interpret it you can interpret this visualization in such a way that the protein that the atoms that are in the core of your protein in the heart of your protein well they have lower thermal uh, you can say vibration and hence you can say ki uh, they they vibrate very less they are very stable and of course the core of protein should be very stable usme vibration kam hi rehne wali while on the other hand the atoms that are present on the surface of your protein well uh, these uh, these would be in uh, you can say interaction with the aqueous solution that it, that, uh, that this protein is present in right so uh, the amino acid residues that are present on the surface of your protein of course uh, they will uh, have some flexibility and they will vibrate more remember right? therefore by this way uh, even if you color it by b factor you can easily tell in your protein molecule ki which are the atoms in your protein molecule that has got higher thermal uh, stability and which are the molecules uh, that are vibrating in uh, a very uh, uh, very higher frequency as such right तो ये आपके सरफेस के ऊपर में है इसका मतलब क्या है ये इसको ज्यादा स्कोप है वाइब्रेट होने के लिए एंड देर फोर इट हैज गॉट हायर बी फैक्टर राइट ऑन द अदर हैंड द एटम्स दैट आर प्रेजेंट इन द कोर ऑफ योर प्रोटीन देर वुड बी वेरी लेस स्कोप ऑफ देम टू वाइब्रेट राइट दे वुड बी मोर स्टेबल एंड देर फोर दे वुड बी कलर्ड इन शेड ऑफ ब्लू ओके सो जस्ट बाय कलरिंग बाय बी फैक्टर Uh, you can uh, identify ki okay which portion of my protein is going to move very fast and which portion of my protein is comparatively very stable which which will not go any uh, fluctuations that is what it says that is what this model implies okay is it clear my friends okay so the value under 10 in your pdb5 देखो वैल्यू क्या है यहाँ पर दैट रेंज फ्रॉम सेवेंटीन टू थर्टी राइट सो देर मस्ट बी से सर्टन वैल्यू कुछ वैल्यूज रह सकती है जो बहुत बड़ी होगी राइट लाइक फिफ्टी फोर बी है यहाँ पर राइट सो द थिंग इज दैट इफ द वैल्यूज आर अंडर टेन इन द बी फैक्टर कॉलम ठीक है इट वुड इंडिकेट दैट द आइटम इज नॉट मूविंग मच एंड इट इज इन द सेम पोजिशन इन ऑल द मोलिकल्स इन दिस्टर राइट so if the value is greater than 50 this ka matlab kya hai if the value is greater than 50 that means these atoms are moving quite really very fast right so abhi uh, this uh, what what are these atoms that are having uh, value above 50 it belong to gluta uh, gln glutamine 121 so let us try to locate this 121 glutamine And let us try to see where it is present. Okay, this is present hundred and twenty one. Okay, so now you can see this glutamine hundred and twenty one is present on very surface of your protein, right? It is exposed to the water molecule, and therefore, my friend, it has got tendency to interact with water molecule. Therefore, it will move fast, right? And therefore, it is having higher Factor, and that is what this data in the B factor column tells you, my friends. क्या बताता है ये कि इसमें से कौन से एटम आपके प्रोटीन में स्टेबल है और कौन से एटम में वाइब्रेशन ज़्यादा है. Right? Now you can see that you have got this particular atom. It is present in quite on the surface. So what is this thing? you can use this leucine 41 and 
and see this is RG nine hundred and twenty eight. And now let us go to RG nine hundred and twenty eight. Let's go. It has got the B factor of like. Is it? Eighty three, eighty five. मतलब these are all side chains. ये side chains के item है, right? N N H one N C Z tagar बने item, right? So what do these things say that this R G nine item can wag around a lot and therefore it has got higher B factor. Right? Okay. Am I making sense? Now, can you correlate the biology that is going behind in the protein with the data that we have? That is uh, what my objective is. Shall we move forward? आगे बढ़े Yes, Nikita has asked like, can we view more than one protein structure simultaneously in PDB? Yes, we can do that. I will show you later on, right? But for timing, let us uh, try to uh, first understand कि भाई uh, uh, how is that this data is present in PDB file and how is that this data is interpreted uh, by your molecular visualization. Okay, we are going to play around with lot of uh, protein <laughs> molecules as we go ahead in our uh, session. Okay. Okay. So now uh, let us talk about this one column that we have left. क्या बताया था मैंने दिस इज बी फैक्टर और इसके पहले वाला कॉलम कौन सा था वट वी कॉल इट एज ऑक्यूपेंसी राइट सो ऑक्यूपेंसी यानी क्या कि वेल से फॉर एग्जांपल लेट अस गो बैक टू द फर्स्ट स्लाइड ओके सो क्रिस्टल में क्या होते वी हैव गॉट व्हेन वी हैव गॉट क्रिस्टल दैट मींस दैट योर प्रोटीन हैज बीन अरेंज इन अ वेरी डिफिनेटिव वे Right, so this is first asymmetric unit, second asymmetric unit. I said, there are many remaining in a crystal. So that that would be that would eventually mean that there would be n number of copies of your protein molecule in the crystal. Is it clear now? यहाँ तक समझ में आ गया कि crystal में क्या है? So what you see a model? ये जो model है, this is average of All the uh, all the atoms that are present in different unit cells. ये एक asymmetric unit है, ये दूसरा asymmetric unit है, तीसरा asymmetric unit इसके बाजू में रहेगा, एक उसके पीछे रहेगा, एक उसके आगे रहेगा, and there would be a big crystal, right? So whatever model that you see over here, ये जो model है, this model is nothing but average of all the protein molecules that are present in different. ओके तो अभी सिचुएशन क्या हो सकती है इट माइट हैपन दैट इन से सम ऑफ द असिमेट्रिक यूनिट सम आइटम्स माइट हैव बीन लोकेटेड एट दिस लोकेशन वाइल इन सम अनादर यूनिट सेल द आइटम्स माइट बी ओरिएंटेड इन से सम डिफरेंट लोकेशन दैट मींस द साइड चेन और द आइटम्स कैन हैव अल्टरनेटिव लोकेशन जैसे यहां पर दिख रहा है Okay. Well, say for example, in half of the uh, asymmetric unit or in half of the unit cells, this side chain might have been oriented in this way. In half of the unit cell, हो सकता है कि the side chain might have oriented in different way, right? So this occupancy column tells you कि भाई uh, uh, this this occupancy will tell you कि भाई of hundred How many uh, unit cell has that confirmation? Right. If the occupancy is one, 
that means the atom has been found to be present in all the asymmetric unit at the same position you get this thing and if uh, the value is 0.5 राइट इसका वैल्यू अगर 0.5 होगा तो इसका मतलब क्या है इन हाफ ऑफ द एसिमेट्रिक यूनिट और इन हाफ ऑफ द यूनिट सेल योर योर मॉलिक्यूल योर एटम वाज प्रेजेंट इन दिस लोकेशन एंड इन हाफ ऑफ द यूनिट सेल इट वाज प्रेजेंट इन से इस अदर लोकेशन तो इससे आपको अल्टरनेट कंफर्मेशन का पता चलता है कि इफ द एटम इज प्रेजेंट इन मल्टीपल लोकेशन इन योर प्रोटीन सो दिस इज समथिंग कॉल्ड एज ऑक्युपेंसी Okay. Yes. Is there anything that uh, I mean? I thought that this session might have been quite really interactive, but uh, you people uh, uh, are not uh, responding. So this is what I have uh, for uh, you know, this session. Uh, in our uh, subsequent uh, session. maybe we will try to uh, do things uh, in more hands on fashion right so are there any questions that you wish to ask thank you sir Are there any questions, or is there anything that you want to add or? Sir, कोई बहुत दिन तो है ना? I mean, please let me know uh, how is that <laughs> I am going to uh, uh, you know understand की हो क्या रहा है यहाँ पर? so i hope now i have kind of cleared ki bhai how is that uh, you download the data from pdb the database uh, how is that you load your protein molecule into pdb database right how is the data arranged in your uh, pdb file okay uh what are the atom lines and what do the columns that are present in atom line correspond what are the coordinate of the atoms agar ye cheeze aap logo ko samajh mein aa gayi hogi to this is what i wanted to convey coordinates kya hote hai har ek atom ka coordinate hota hai jo aapka molecular visualizer aapko express karke batayega right so uh, the session is uh, open for discussion but participants uh, you can also interact with our issues question uh, at the end of our second session because second session we will start exactly at 1:30 where we will be able to uh, get to know about this different whatever sales thought uh, in this first session so uh, i think so uh, we should wind up this first session and uh, we will meet again at 1:30 that will be better i think okay so i i would kind of uh, advise you that you download the files uh, that i have given you in uh, your uh, whatsapp okay uh, download the uh, download your uh, visualizer okay yeah, it is not big it is say some 100 mb or so it might be already there in your pc if you are already working okay then uh, uh, we might uh, do something and so on he this was theory that i was talking about in this uh, this session as such okay in next session we will try to do things it it would uh, make a lot of sense if you if you yourself do it right 
So, dear participants, please be ready uh, with whatever Sir has sent in the WhatsApp group. Please install it and be ready uh, to do, you know, step by step with our resource person in the second session. So, see you all again at 1.30, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for your meaningful session. We have learned a lot about uh, the structure of protein and, and the difference of trace. So I hope our participants have benefited from it. Thank you, sir. So, see you guys at 1.30 then. <laughs>